I'm here now with Tyler Holinsky's parents, Mark and Kim, and thank you guys so much for joining us. Why did now feel like the right time to tell his, his story? Well, I mean, we've been actually telling this story since January, but it, it took us a while to put the pieces together and make sure that, that it would be told right. Um, and there's a lot of information that came out since January. Um, and we knew that his story had to be told. We just couldn't keep what we found out to ourselves. I think all of that came together. Um, and we need to help people. And keeping that information inside is not going to do that. And when you reference what you, you found out, of course, when someone kills themselves, I'm sure that the family is asking why a lot. And the, the revelation that he did have CTE, did that give you answers? Or did it just lead to more questions? You know, for me, that it, it was really startling, right? That we didn't expect that. Um, we went through the process. We met with the medical examiner who said, hey, by the way, we'd like to introduce you to, to the Mayo Clinic. Um, and they, you know, they were very kind, right? I mean, it's, it's a very sensitive, tough, tough part of uh, the job. Um, so we kind of forgot about it, you know, by the time that happened. Um, when we got it back, it actually, it actually provided a little bit of, of the missing part, right? In, in our world, it's, you know, you're a college kid. You, you lose a football game. You fight with your girlfriend. You, have, you get parking tickets. That gets you to about 50. You know, death by suicide might be 1,000. What's in that gap? And CTE, we think, probably had some part in that. How much? We're not the experts. Um, but it, it, it answered a little bit, and it gave us no more comfort, but it gave us a little bit of a uh, sense of what he was struggling with. Obviously, you found out a lot through this process. Did you learn anything about yourselves or, or Tyler in telling this story? Yes, for Tyler, and we knew this really before Tyler passed. Um, Tyler was amazing, sweet, good, kind. Um, everybody loved him. And so, yes, after he passed, those stories that we are already knew, they were just magnified. And, and we say that it's been five months since he passed. How, are, how have we come this far um, in such a short amount of time? And it's fueled by the person that Tyler was and the love that so many people have for this, this beautiful young man that they didn't even know, and, and our love for him too. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I can't even imagine. Mark, in, in the documentary, you say this happened on your watch. Is there anything you wish you had done differently or Washington State had done differently or any of his friends had done differently? Yeah, I, I mean, it's um, when, when the end of life is death by suicide, um, you look back on things that you now can put together or now you speculate on. and things that I would have done differently or would have hoped to have done differently. Um, without that ending, some of the things, for example, you know, you had a tough loss after the Arizona game. And we all saw the interview after the game and he was very down. I got to talk to him after the game um, about that and, and with some of his coaches. But that's part of the process, right? I mean, losing a football game as a quarter, 60 of them in Division One lose every weekend that they play. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a crazy loop that you take yourself through. Um, but at the end of the day, he used to say, you know, we win or we lose, and my son's gone. I have three beautiful boys, and, and one of them's gone. So, um, yeah, it's going to be very difficult to ever kind of get out of that. Now, the, the sense of love in your, your family is, is very palpable throughout the piece. But as parents now, and, and knowing what you did and do about uh, Tyler's death, how difficult is it to watch Ryan continue to play, you know, knowing he's going to be headed to South Carolina, continuing to play football? That is, uh, from a mom too, and, and, and not just, you know, because you're a dad, but it, it's, it's somewhat harder for me. I have a hard time watching games anyway, right? You know, my favorite time of the season is in the spring when they play seven on seven, because you can't touch the quarterback in seven on seven, right? But in a game, I usually watch through closed eyes or, or through my hands. Um, and now knowing that Tyler had CTE um, and then knowing that, that Ryan, after we got all the information that we could and we, we spoke to neurologists you know, and psychologists and the Mayo Clinic over and over again, 
we found out as much information as we as we could, and we gave that information to Ryan, and, and we've said this before, it's can we find out if he has CTE now and you can't test for CTE in the living? You know, it's post-mortem. And is there a genetic or, or, or hereditary link? We don't know that either. So we gave as much information as we could to Ryan, who's 18 here pretty soon and, and can make his own decisions. And he loves football, just like Tyler did, loves it. And he said, don't worry, Mom, I I'm, don't have it. I'm not going to get it, and I'm going to keep playing football. So yes, it's going to be hard to watch him, um, and I, I love that kid, and I'm going to support him and, and be there for him in, in anything that he does. And it's a hard process, right? You know, clearly, it's mm -hmm. his passion, and, yeah. and as you said, his decision. Do you wish he wouldn't play? Do I wish he were 12 years old and never played? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do I wish at 17 years old now, I don't have enough information for him to say, you need to stop playing football. I, I can give him all the information that I can and know that um, it's, it's ultimately not my decision. I think there's a lot, there's a lot of risks in sports. You know, mm -hmm. um, My brothers and I grew up riding and racing motorcycles, for example, one of the many different things. But I think Ryan, Ryan's an amazing kid and his response was exactly that. There's there's a risk in everything, and this is something I I'm passionate about. I'm really you know excited to to be part of, and and I'm pretty good at it, and I want to continue to do this. And I think being close to him and working through that and having those talks and discussions, um, I, I'm fully supportive of of him doing that. If new information should come out. Um, uh, of course, we'll continue to have those dialogues. And of course, you guys are doing a lot of good work. What is something you want everyone to take away from you being open and honest and sharing this story? Uh, the, the, the easiest one, and, and we're, we're sad, grieving parents. Everybody would be in, in our same position. Kim touched on it earlier. The specific examples of what Tyler was like in life and how he treated other people um, and how happy and positive he was to be around if this can happen to him, it can happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. And so taking the stigma away um, from, from talking about mental health or a potential mental illness um, is really the goal uh, of our foundation. If you tear an ACL, there'll be five guys that'll fix it. Um, and, and no athlete would be ashamed of that. And we want the same thing for mental health. If you're, not, if you're having a tough day or you're having odd thoughts and, and you're not sure what to do about them, the team should be, should have, all sports teams should have the ability to, to help that athlete uh, take care of themselves. Mark and Kim Holinsky, I appreciate so much you sharing this story. Obviously, no one should have to go through what you did. Holinskyshope.org for more on information on what Mark and Kim are doing for mental health and student athletes.